recorded live. Hello, everybody. This is Jörg Lissmann again from the YouTube channel Jockler66. We are here tonight on another broadcast on the platform of Hour of the Truth that is provided by my very good friend, Walt Stickel, from the website Grand Design Exposed. And today we're going to have a little bit of a premiere because we are not only doing the broadcast here on Hour of the Truth, but we will have a broadcast of about an hour and a half that we will be cutting in half in two parts of 45 minutes. That gives us the possibility to also put this broadcast on uh, another platform, and that is Block Talk Radio, that is also hosted by Walt Stickel. The idea of that is, of course, to get more attention on the Internet, because we are all aware of the fact that we are running out of time. And that is also part of the, this, of the reason why we do this discussion and this reading tonight. The reading tonight will be on the subject, the Vatican Jesuit global conspiracy. But I will not go deeper into that because Walt will give you a very good introduction in a few minutes. He is uh, my co-host of tonight. Walt Stickel over there in Romerica. How are you doing? Uh, good morning and good evening to uh, Europe. <laughs> Everything fine there on the west coast of the United States, yeah? Yes, yeah, yeah, sunny, sh sunny shores here. Sunny shores, yeah. We had a little thunderstorm this afternoon with hail, and now the sun is shining a little bit, but the sun is setting because it's already 8 o'clock tonight. Anyway, what day do we have today? This is the broadcast from the 30th of April, 2015, and that is interesting in two, uh, two interesting points here. First and for all, tomorrow is May the 1st. May the 1st is um, the birthday of the Illuminati, founded by Jesuit professor of canon law at Jesuit University of Ingolstadt in Bavaria, 1776. Well, of course, all you over there in America know that because you have the pyramid of the Illuminati on your $1 bill and the date 1776 engraved in it, and you think that is because the founding of your nation. No, I think that has some other reason, but we will probably go into that someday later. But before we go into the subject of the Vatican Jesuit global conspiracy and Walt will introduce that to you, I have some unfinished business about the last two weeks' broadcasts that we had. You probably remember that we were speaking about, um, last week, Rome's sodomy and the ultimatum that Rome sets by the Jubilee year to the Protestants we all have. But still on the subject of idolatry and sodomy, I was today made aware of another point that we overlooked. Well, you, you know, you, you can understand that probably because the Bible is 66 books and I don't know it by heart and probably most of you don't know it by heart. <laughs> That's why we have it as books. We can read on it. And uh, I was watching a video from a very good YouTube channel that uh, can everybody advise to have a look on that is called My Soul Refuge. And he made a video on some characteristics of the Antichrist, like we also did uh, broadcast on that, as you probably remember, under the name Hour of the Truth. We cover 26 different characteristics of the Antichrist from the website remnantofgod.org and made 11 broadcasts on these from that are already seven uploaded to my YouTube channel right now. Anyway, um, my Soul Refuge, uh, that brother in Christ, made a very good video about 28 and a half minutes long, as, I, as far as I remember. And he mentioned, when coming to the subject of idolatry, he uh, pointed out that we should read Psalms chapter 115 of the King James Version of the Bible. And um, I would like to do a little reading of Psalms 115. It's not that much long. It's only 18 uh, verses. So uh, we can do that as an introduction and also to close the subject of the idolatry we have been dealing with the last uh, two broadcasts that we covered that already into uh, quite some deep uh, intents. But uh, Psalms chapter 115 is also very interesting. By that I will read that and I will advise you to do that and compare every verse that is written in Psalms chapter 115 of the King James Version via the website biblehub.com and compare what other Bibles write. And I can tell you right now, when you do that, you will be astonished about what other Bibles have to say on some verses, how they twist it and turn that around. 
I read it this afternoon, and that is why I think it is very profound for me now to read to you Psalms chapter 115 from the King James Version. So, without any further ado, here it comes. I'm going to read Psalms chapter 115, starting in verse 1. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory, for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. Wherefore should the heathen say, Where is now their God? But our God is in the heavens, and he hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not, neither speak they through their throat. They that make them are like unto them, so is every one that trusted in them. O Israel, trust thou in the Lord, he is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord, he is their help and their shield. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord, he is their help and their shield. The Lord hath been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. Ye are blessed of the Lord, which made heaven and earth. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's. But the earth, has he given to the children of men. The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. And that continues the reading of Psalm 115. So please read that for yourself and you will see how much this goes together with all the teaching that were done on the latest broadcast here on Hour of the Truth concerning the idolatry and the connection also to the sodomites that we were talking about. Um, is there something that you want to say, Walt, to Psalms 115 that I just read here? Do you have any comment on that? No, except uh, it is clarified. I mean, when you read the second commandment now, you know, uh, idolatry, God uh, explains idolatry all through the Bible, and, um, and especially uh, it's, idolatry is described in Romans chapter 1, <clears throat> and we're going to be covering this, we're going to cover this in the Vatican Jesuit Global Conspiracy by Ronald Cook, because mm -hmm. Ronald Cook covers this also. Yeah. Okay, there's just one thing that I uh, want to emphasize from Psalms 115, and that is verse number 8. Let me repeat that once more. Verse number 8, quote, They that make them, the idols he is talking about, are like unto them. So is everyone that trusts in them. And that is exactly everything that Tom went about when explaining last week the combination of what has idolatry to do with sodomy, which is today, of course, called homosexuality. But I advise you to scrap that word homosexuality from your dictionary and use the biblical term sodomy. But this verse, number eight, is absolutely a confirmation of everything that Tom said last week. Here it goes again. They that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusteth in them. The people who make these idols, whether from stone, from gold, from silver, from wood, from sand, from plastic, I don't know, they are just like them. And so is everybody that trusts in them. And trusts means also that bows down to them and that worships them. So I hope I made my point here and we can close now the subject of Rome's sodomy which I found very interesting and advise everybody to watch the video about that. And now I want to leave it up to Walt to make his introduction on why we are doing and what we are doing on the broadcast 
with the title The Vatican Jesuit Global Conspiracy, how Walt came to this and what exactly he did with it and what exactly are we reading, Walt. So please, introduce yourself for, for yourself, for the listeners who don't know you that well up to now, including your website and everything else. And uh, here you go. you got the floor. Okay. Uh, thanks, York. <clears throat> My name is Walt Stickle, and, I, and I'm the webmaster for Grand Design Exposed. And uh, I started that in 2011, and I just want to briefly mention the Grand Design Exposed. The Grand Design are Catholic terminology. That's their plan for their, their final thrust for world government. Is that, that that isn't, and then and John Daniel, he wrote the book called The Grand Design Exposed, and uh, but that's where he got the title, and his book is exposing the Grand Design. Now before we start this discussion on this book, I want to lay a little introduction and a little platform to understand what's going on in the world today and to understand the visit of the Pope in September of 2015. There are some key words that you have to know. Now the goal of this broadcast, you've heard the word incite, like incite a riot. Well, this is to incite research to wake you up, for you to grab a book and understand these four words that I'm going to explain. To understand the Vatican Jesuit global conspiracy, you have to understand the word Romanism. And then you have Rome, and then the Reformation. Because the Reformation led to the Counter-Reformation which is the Jesuits. It's much clearer if you want to know historically what a Jesuit is, you just call them counter-reformers. And it's real important because we have a counter-reformer coming to speak in September to a joint session of Congress, or you might say a joint session of Jesuits. Now, in a and how, how, do you, how do you understand the word Romanism? Well, up on my website, in Grand Design Exposed, Tom Fress, oh, this is a year ago probably, he read the book Romanism and the Reformation by Henry Grattan Guinness. And also, after that, we did a study. He read it twice. And, and I, I can't think of a better place to point you. If probably the, Tom has read, Tom Fress of Inquisition Update has read numerous books. You know. But I can't think of one that was more all the books that he read prior to this led to this book. So it's important to read. If you read Romanism and the Reformation by Henry Grattan Guinness, you're going to understand the two first words, Romanism and the Reformation. Now, there's another th thing I want to cover, is we've all been guilty of this, and as beginning today, I'm going to start training myself to never say this word, pronounce this word wrong again. And the word is Protestant. Now, everybody has heard Protestant, but they never, you know, they don't, they, when they look at the word Protestant, that's the way they, they say it. But it's pronounced Protestant. And we, when we talk about Protestantism, it's Protestantism. Protestantism. It is not Protestantism. Why? It's a misdirection. 
It's a misdirection. When you say the word wrong, you miss the protest. Even the average person on the street understands what protest means. So you say, I'm a protestant. They say, well, what are you protesting? Well, <clears throat> I'm, well I'm protesting the, the, the Jesuit counter-reformer coming to speak to a joint session of Congress in September of 2015. Now, this whole booklet, this booklet that we're going to be getting into, is written by Ronald Ronald Cook. Now he's mentored under Paisley. What's uh, Paisley's first name? I can't. It's um, uh, uh, York. You know the first name, but can you pronounce Paisley? His first uh, name. You mean, you mean the guy who protested, protested the Pope's visit in the European Parliament some years that's, ago? That's right. What was his first name? Ian Paisley. Ian, Ian Paisley. Okay. Yes. Yes. Ronald Cook mentored under Paisley. He he. I've heard him interviewed uh, uh, several times on Chris Pinto's broadcast. He's not. It's not. It's not easy to find on the internet. And and the fact that I, I got this uh, PDF files. Uh, off of uh, James Japan's website, and I and I printed it out. And after I started reading it, I realized this is so pertinent to today. Why? Because when he wrote this 30 years ago, you see, we didn't have a Jesuit as a pope. And and then we. And then when he wrote, he had no idea when he wrote it 30 years ago that there would be a Jesuit pope coming to speak to, to a joint session of Congress. Now, now also, you see, this broadcast, again, is to incite research. Now, where could I send you to find out about the, the counter-reformation? Well, this this broadcast is being going to be broadcast also on Mystery Babylon News Radio. And on the 9th of December in 2012, I invited Tom Fress of Inquisition Update. And where our first broadcast was, was All Roads Lead to Rome. I might just back up here a little bit and what motivated me is, you know, I was listening... And I got a. I was listening to Lori Berkebile's Lori's Talk News Radio, and, and I got to know Lori Berkebile, and you know, I started sharing, and pretty soon she said, "Whoa, whoa! All you do is talk about the Jesuits." Well, I kind of put my tail between my legs, and, and I went back to the drawing board, and I started looking again, and oh God, you know it's. They're def, 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 their Jesuits are definitely in history. They're definitely there. And so one morning I woke up, and I've listened to Tom Fresh probably eight years. And 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 and, and particularly the Romanism and the Reformation. And there's a few books that I've listened from the first broadcast. I haven't listened to every single book he read. But I've kind of I've probably listened to some of the most important, but they're all important. But so that motivated me. I got out of bed one morning and I said, "Well, you know, all I got to do is I, I, I'm not a radio personality. You can tell that by already by the first three four minutes here. You know, I've been a pilot in my life. I drove truck for ten years." But uh, I really don't have a voice of an announcer. So, but I, those first two broadcasts that Tom and I did back in 2012, 
I did some work. Every time I had him on, I did some work. I asked him some pretty good questions because I knew he had the answer. And that leads to the second broadcast, the Counter-Reformation. If you listen to those first two broadcasts, you're going to get an education because to understand Jesuit, you've got to understand a little bit of history. And that's what this is all about, is to incite people, because I'm going to let you in on a little something here. You know, if you go out into the streets now, if you know that the Pope is coming in September, well, you've heard it on the Internet, and you probably heard it here. You probably heard it on Hour of the Truth. Tom and uh, Tom and uh, York did a broadcast, and I know he sent me a, a link to it today. It's got over almost eight thousand clicks. So there are people interesting. You know, the Pope is coming. It's not. It's not some theory. It's not some conspiracy theory. You know. So, so when you. So this is the reason why I started focusing on this book. It's because it's so pertinent to 2015. And you can go up to Grand Design Exposed. At the very top of the page, you're going to see the key words. Romanism and the Reformation. And then you're going to see the word Counter-Reformation. And then you're going to see the word Protestant deprotestantizing de- of America. See, it's Romanism, Reformation, protest, Protestantism, and Counter-Reformation. And I'm going to parrot Chris Pinto. I've heard Chris Pinto say this on several occasions. The, the events, the history, and the world events that we've seen in the last 500 years come from the Reformation the Romanism and the Reformation and the Counter-Reformation. Now, now, and before we, now, we've covered the four words. I've pointed you to where you, you, because there's nothing to sell. Let me get back right now. You can go up there to my website, and you can see at the top of the Vatican Jesuit, and I've gotten big print, Counter-Reformation, Global Conspiracy, the New World Order Revealed. Click here. Now you can click there, and that little booklet that I'm working on, and I'm updating it every day. I started, I started to understand before we get into this book, this, little, this was a booklet, 55 pages. It's up to 95 now. What I've done is this. To understand history that's been not taught to us, it's like building a a puzzle. If you only have half of the pieces, you're not going to get the full picture. So uh, in this introduction, I write, I write an introduction that's more prevalent today. And then after Ronald Cook, he has a preface and five chapters. I've got in the back of the book the first chapter of, of, of Rulers of Evil. And I always say this. I always say this about... Now, this is real important, and I'm taking a little time here, York, because I want to lay a, 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 a foundation for for this book because because when you because because when you don't have all the pieces you know in other words it, it, the decisions you we make are only uh, the the decisions we make are only as good as the information we receive now if we receive wrong information we're not going to get a clear picture on what's going on now see there's nothing to sell here you can go get this book for, for nothing, just a download. It's all you need. Now, I'm getting back to the heart of the book. 
Ronald, Ronald, because when we get into it, you'll under, we, we'll explain it a little bit as we're going, how I put this together. We've got five chapters with Ronald Cook, and then Tupper Saucy, and then I have a, a piece that out of Chris Pinto's forward to Washington, the lap of Rome, on Inquisition in America with a question mark. And then I have the second chapter of Tupper Saucy's book called Mission Ad- Adaptation, which is a very, and we're, we're going to get into it. We'll get into it. Then it was only two days ago I woke up. And probably the second best read that Tom Fress of Inquisition Update has ever read was code word uh, Bar- Barbalon, Danger in the Vatican by P.D. Stewart. I woke up and I realized the 31st chapter, the 31st chapter is up on my website. Scroll down to the buttons, you'll find it. But it's going to be in this booklet also. <clears throat> Why? Because he named, he named the chapter, the 30, 31st chapter, America, how it became a Jesuit enclave. Now, dear reader, dear listeners, do you think, do you think with the Pope coming to speak to a joint session of Congress that it hasn't become an enclave? It's chilling. It's not if it's coming. It's here. And yes, all I talk about is the Jesuits because it's the Vatican Jesuit global conspiracy. And then I have some quotes in the back there on Charles Spurgeon and on what Luther says. These men were adamant. These men knew who Rome was. And they spoke with words that, that Walt can't even begin to, to paint a picture as Charles Spurgeon has. Now, in the last thing I want to talk about before we get into this book is the word freedom of conscience. You know, I realized that I am just starting to understand what freedom of conscience really is all about. Because I'm coming out of the cloud. I've been in the fog. I haven't had a clear picture. And one of the reasons is, is because I really wasn't exercising my freedom of conscience. And let me tell you where the freedom of conscience came from. There was no freedom of conscience in the Dark Ages. There was no freedom of conscience. It wasn't until the Reformation that people started, could ask questions. You see, a good Protestant is that when he hears something new or something, he, he asks questions. Now, get, let me give you an example This is a perfect example of people that want to take your freedom of conscience away. And that's the Sabbath. You now let let me give you my freedom of conscience as an example on the biblical Sabbath. Now whether you you remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, it's not salvation, okay? I'm just giving you my freedom of conscience. You see, but when, in other words, and I have have some, I have a a link up on my webpage. But when you mention the fourth commandment, people come out of the woodwork. They, They do not want you to express your freedom of conscience. I don't care if they worship on Sunday. 
I have no problem with that. I believe in freedom of conscience. But my conscience tells me that I should remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now, that's my freedom of conscience. You've got whole websites up there on the Internet devoted to destroying the fourth commandment. To destroy your freedom of conscience. Now that's what freedom of conscience. Now let's take it one more little example. During the dark ages, you know, when the priest came around, when, you know, do you believe that this cookie this Jesus cookie is the actual body and blood of Jesus Christ? And no. Well, you went on the rack. There's no freedom of conscience in Roman Catholicism. Now, that's all right. You see, see, it's like this. When they go to, to their mass... Just go ahead and take it just for a second, would you? No problem. When Walt is talking about the conscience that he has and the conscience that everybody today thinks that he has, there is one very important thing I would like you to remember, and that's a quote that I already wrote, uh, read a few times on the different broadcasts that we do here. And that quote <clears throat> comes from the book... Rome and Civil Liberty, written by James Atkin Wiley. And that goes, God alone is Lord of the conscience. And that was the truth that set Europe free. Now, I can read it a thousand times, and you maybe still do not understand it, but I think in the way that Walt tried to explain where his conscience comes from, his conscience is based, like my conscience is based, on the King James Bible. And the King James Bible believe that we have on it, you know? And that is the conscience that set Europe free. By that he meant the Reformation. The Reformation set the conscience of the people in Europe free. And those people in Europe who could, not, who could still not exercise their freedom of conscience here in Europe, they went over, <clears throat> sorry, they went over to the so-called New World. They went over to the United States of America, what it is today. And they filled that land that was nearly uninhabited. When you look at how big that country is and how, many, how, how few people live there, it is quietly uninhabited. And they filled that country because there they sought freedom of conscience. And of course, what Americans call in the Constitution the right to, to, to pursue their, um, their, their liberty and their uh, happiness. And God alone was, uh, is the Lord of the conscience. That means God's word is what the conscience in us sets free. And the people over in Europe were forbidden to read the word of God, to study the word of God, and to live the word of God. And if you did that, you went against the Roman Catholic Church. And when you went against the Roman Catholic Church, you were inquisited. You were JFK, to put it in modern terms. You know, you were put to death. You were burned on the stake. You were tortured in chambers that you have no idea of. But I can put some pictures in this video that we do here of some instruments that they used during the Inquisition to everybody who said, my conscience is the base it's the word of God as I understand it. And the Roman Catholic Church up to this day doesn't want you to read the Bible, doesn't want you to understand the Bible, doesn't want you to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ who is your Savior. And the Bible states it very clearly. There is only one mediator between God and man, and that is the man Christ Jesus. No Mother Mary, no idol, no bishop, no cardinal, no priest, and surely no pope who sits over there in Rome on the throne playing himself that he is God. 
you have to understand this very important sentence. God alone is Lord of the conscience. And you can decide for yourself whether you want God to be your guide to your conscience or you want the Pope to be the guide to your conscience. I think this is a very profound subject that Walt is just talking about there and that we can elaborate on probably for even hours to go on with that. The point being is, when you do not have your freedom of conscience, you don't have any freedom at all. You are a slave. You are oppressed by the will of others. And the will of others is the will of the Roman Catholic Church and their hierarchy. The hierarchy within the church and everything that belongs to it. Also like the Society of Jesus, the so-called Society of Jesus, better known as the Jesuits today. And the Pope today, who says that he is your conscience and he has to say what is good and what is wrong and what is right and, 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 and what is false, he sits there and he is a Jesuit. He took the fourth vow of induction. And I made, in the time of nothing but the truth, an in, an, uh, a, bra a broadcast on that, on the Jesuit evil oath of induction. And you can look that up on my YouTube channel, Watch Juggler 66 and please do that and listen to it for yourself. And then you will maybe understand what kind of person today is hailed two years ago by Time magazine as man of the year, the New World Order Pope, the guy who puts it all together, a Jesuit, right out of the pit he comes. And he comes over there this year to the United States of America to speak to a joint session of Congress in September on behalf, listen to this, on behalf of American people. They don't have their own voice anymore. They don't need their own voice anymore. They have given it up. They have given up the protest because they invite the Antichrist to speak on their behalf from their own legislature. That is what's going to happen. And if you don't understand that, and if you don't understand the consequences of that, well, you will see things that happen like now in Baltimore and that happened before that in Ferguson. You will see that happening all over your country. And if you do not stand up, you give up your eternal life because you have not found Jesus. That's just a warning from me and from Walt. Go and seek out your friend, and he shows you who your enemy is. Go out and seek Jesus, and he will show you who your enemy is, who the Antichrist is, and who the one is who depresses your conscience, and your freedom of speech, and your freedom of religion, because freedom of religion is mentioned in the United States Constitution as one of the very first points, and that opened the door for the Roman Catholics at that time to come in, but Rome itself states, and you can look that up, that is in the Catholic Encyclopedia. I don't know where now, but you can look that up. Rome itself says, we do not permit the freedom of religion. We only permit that to go somewhere in where there is no freedom of religion. And as soon as we have achieved that, we will take it away. Everything that Rome says, everything that Rome does points to the direction that there is no freedom of religion. There is no freedom of conscience within the Roman Catholic Church. Okay, Walt, you're back? Yes, I am. And okay, listen, take over. Listen, it's like you couldn't, you were just amplifying where I was going with my next, where I was going. I'm going to just uh, mention again, if to all the listeners, you need to understand the Royal Declaration. So for somebody that's the first time, we can't stop and explain all the, but you can go back to prior broadcasts. And we're going to cover it because the Royal Declaration is in this, in this book that we're going to be reading. So it's, it's, a, it's a chapter. But I want to just amplify exact, everything that York was saying. It's right in the Royal Declaration. You know, I hereby, by the grace of God, 
of, of England, of king or queen of England, Scotland and Ireland, defender of the faith, do solemnly and sincerely in the presence of God profess, testify, and declare that I do believe that in that sacrament of the Lord's Supper that there is not any transubstantiation of the elements of the bread and wine in the body and blood of Christ. At or after the concentration thereof by any person whatsoever and that the invocation, adoration of Virgin Mary or any other saint in the sacrifice of the Mass, as they are now used in the Church of Rome, are superstitious and idolatrous. You see, during the Dark Ages, that was not allowed, because that is my freedom of conscience. See, I think that that's blasphemy to sacrifice the perfect sacrifice the one sacrifice and to continually do it over and over in the mass it's blasphemy that's my freedom of conscience that's and 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 you 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 i couldn't say it any better but it's to understand to understand what the reformation gave us, and I say this to even people in the secular world, people that tell me that they don't believe in the Bible, I just tell them right out. The little freedom that we do have, it came from the cross. It came from the perfect sacrifice. So with, so with that, York, uh, before we get into this book, we've got about two or three minutes to, to close this segment. Now, what we're going to do is just we're going to pause for three seconds and come back and start an, another 45 minutes so it'll fit in blog talk. So that we're, I've laid the foundation for the reading of this book and the importance of it, and it can be read right now. All you have to do is go to Grand Design Exposed and you'll find, see it right at the top of the paper. You have a big click here, and you click there, and you can download it. I'm not a, I'm not a web designer. I'm a web builder, okay? And um, also, brothers and sisters, if you see any typos and stuff, I don't have any editors. And um, my 100% uh, my German friend there in Belgium <laughs> has to uh, help me with my English once in a while because I wasn't taught proper English. And that's all by design. So anyway, with that, I think we're just we're at 42 minutes, and we're just going to pause for three seconds, and then York will introduce the second part. So we'll just pause for three seconds, and then you start, York. 